flux. Magnetic flux is a very powerful idea. The end point for magnetic flux for us is going to be the energy generation that's at the root of our civilization. So magnetic flux, the importance of it, cannot be overstated. We're going to start out, and it's going to seem pretty abstract, but just bear with me for now. Magnetic flux, the way that you can think about it, is it's a measure of how much field passes through an area. Well, that's kind of a wibbly-wobbly definition, but that's one way to think about it. So I'm going to draw a magnetic field. Let's draw a magnetic field coming out of the page. Okay, and we're going to think about the flux, the magnetic flux, through a loop, the area bounded by a loop. Okay, so if I have a loop like so, the magnetic flux is equal to how much magnetic field is passing through that loop. So one way we can increase the magnetic flux, one way we can get more magnetic field to pass through this loop is to make the loop bigger, to increase the area of the loop, make it a bigger loop. Now more magnetic field is passing through it. Okay. Another way we can increase the magnetic flux to get more magnetic field to pass through it is to make the magnetic field stronger. If the magnetic field is stronger, there's going to be more magnetic field lines. There's going to be more magnetic field passing through the loop. So that's another way we could do it. We could increase the magnetic field strength. A third way we can do it is we could adjust the angle between the loop and the magnetic field. If I keep turning it until the uh, loop is perpendicular to the field, then none of that magnetic field is passing through it. So there's three ways we can alter the magnetic flux. We can change the area, we can change the magnetic field, or we can change the angle that the loop makes with the magnetic field. And that leads us into the basic equation for magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is represented, or the variable used with it, is phi, Greek letter phi, or phi, whatever you want to call it. it looks like a circle with a line, and then two lines up, up top and down bottom. And the magnetic flux is equal to B times A times the cosine of theta, where B is the magnetic field strength, A is the area that you're considering the magnetic flux through, and theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area. Now I want to emphasize that. Theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area. Memorize that phrase. Very often people don't use the right theta. They think about the angle between the magnetic flux, or excuse me, the magnetic field and the area itself. That is incorrect. Do not do that. Theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area. The units, let's think about that. Well, if you just look at the equation, the units of magnetic flux should be tesla meter squared. But a tesla meter squared, that's actually equal to another unit that's defined as a Weber, which is abbreviated as WB. So the units of magnetic flux are tesla meter squared, which are the same as a Weber. Now using this equation, we can solve it for B, and if we do that, we get B is equal to the magnetic flux divided by A cosine theta. If we do that, uh, sometimes B is called the magnetic flux density, and this equation sort of shows why. The B here is equal to the magnetic flux through a loop divided by the area times the cosine theta. So it's kind of like a density of field, of magnetic flux per area. Uh, that's not a very common way of thinking about it, but it comes up every once in a while. Okay, so we got magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is equal to BA cosine theta. Never forget what that theta is. And the units are tesla meter squared or Weber. There's another thing called magnetic flux linkage. The only difference between magnetic flux linkage and magnetic flux is magnetic flux link linkage takes into account the number of turns you have in a loop. So usually we're going to consider the magnetic flux through some kind of wire loop. 
And if we just have one simple loop of wire, then the magnetic flux is just what it is, and it's the same as the magnetic flux linkage. If we have two loops of wire, however, the magnetic flux linkage is twice the flux, because two of the loops, there are two loops, and each loop has a flux through it. So the magnetic flux linkage is twice the magnetic flux. And in fact, if we have n loops of wire, then the magnetic flux linkage is equal to n times the magnetic flux. So a magnetic flux linkage is just n, where n is the number of loops of wire we have, and then phi is the flux through, that, through a loop of wire. So magnetic flux linkage is equal to nBa cosine theta, and it has the same units as magnetic flux. Okay, let's try this out a couple times. Let's try a couple example, examples. Um, so let's say we have a singular circular loop with a radius of one meter that's sitting in a field of 0 0.150 Tesla. And let's say that we have these three orientations. Well, in this first orientation, the magnetic field is parallel to a vector perpendicular to the area. So if we use our equation, we'll get to the magnetic flux is 0 0.471 Weber. And this second one, the way that I've drawn it, the angle between the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the area is 30 degrees. So if we use our equation, the magnetic flux is 0 0.408 Webers. And in the third example, here I've drawn the magnetic field and the loop, and uh, the magnetic field and a vector perpendicular to the loop. Well, the angle between those two things is 90 degrees. And so if you put that in your equation, the magnetic flux is zero. And if we look back, the greatest magnetic flux happened at the first example. There are more, there's more magnetic field passing through that than if you tilt it. If you begin to tilt it, less magnetic field will flow through it. And if you keep tilting it until the loop is just sort of, uh, well, no magnetic field lines pass through the loop, then in that last case, the magnetic flux is zero. No field passes through the loop. Okay. Now let's think about what, how would this change if uh, instead of a single loop of wire we had a loop with 20 turns. So a loop with wire that went around in a loop 20 times. How would that change? Well, then n is equal to 20 and the magnetic flux linkage would be 20 times the flux in each case.